Thank you, everyone, for tuning in to the AT Radio Show. It is my pleasure to introduce to you Stetson, a.k.a. Frogman1. How are you? Hey, guys. Doing great. Doing great. How are you, Jimmy? I'm doing very well, thank you. Before we get into yeah. your actual adventure right now, um, why did you start? What were your inspirations for undergoing a, a through hike? Well, um, from the top, I have to say my main inspirations or uh, motivations to start the hike were, one, I'm in the, a good place in my life to do so. I uh, just finished up my undergraduate degree uh, last year and then worked for a year and kind of uh, in between right now, planning out the next step. And uh, so I had the time, which is big. And uh, then as far as overall inspiration, uh, I've been wanting to do the trail for a while. I grew up uh, in the foothills of the trail in uh, southwestern Virginia. And uh, it's uh, always been an interest of mine since I was a child. I don't think it was ever very, um, you know, I never really knew when when I wanted to do it. It was just always something that was there. I knew that at some point I would be doing it. Do you think your proximity to the trail, because I know I, I also live in a town that's right near the AT, and that, that's what steered my interest to it. Uh, do you think that had a big part in it, or would you have been interested regardless? No, I think it had a fair part, um, a, a fair amount of influence. You know, the town where I live, it's, uh, or where I'm from, it's Lexington, Virginia. It's next to Buena Vista, Virginia, which is kind of a trail town. Um, in proximity, though, Buena Vista is about nine miles from the trail, so... Um, you do get hikers coming through there, but not in a large volume as some of the other towns that are closer to the trail. Um, so I, I honestly didn't see that many hikers growing up. Um, so it wasn't actual firsthand experiences with other, uh, you know, with, with AT through hikers that so much led me to do it. Um, but I did grow up near the AT. I knew it was there. Um, I'd hiked sections of it. I did, you know, um, some smaller sections as a child just mostly day hikes. And then I think when I was 14, I did my first, you know, couple weeks and, uh, that, that obviously led me to do it. And I think the main thing was just, you know, my mom went to nature camp, um, near the trail and she always talked about it and took me on little hikes and I had little AT handkerchiefs and stuff like that. So it was just kind of always there in, in, the, in the back of my mind, you know, it was something that, that was very important for me to, um, to, uh, to do. And, uh, at some point in my life. Well, now let's look back to the beginning. Um, well, before we go back to the beginning, where are you right now uh, in proximity and, and how much uh, left do you have? Where do you stand right now? Currently, I am in uh, Harrisburg, Virginia. Um, it's in the far western, southwestern part of Virginia near the West Virginia border. Um, I, I, I'm a southbound hiker. Um, uh, known as a Sobo, which means that I started at Mount Katahdin in Maine, and I'm hiking down to Springer Mountain, Georgia. Um, conversely, there are north, northbound hikers from Nobos, and they start the opposite direction. They start in Georgia, go up to Maine. I'm sure a lot of the listeners probably probably realize this, but uh, you know, northbound hikers are far more common. Uh, being southbound, we're a bit of the minority, but um, I'm like I said, I'm currently in Parisburg, and I am a little more than halfway down with the trail. Um, I still have uh, a good chunk left. Um, so, was was going southbound <clears throat> something you chose because you wanted to go south rather than north, or was it just because of how the cards fell? It was more of how the cards fell. Um, I think initially, I I wanted to go north. Um, I wanted not because I cared which way I went. Really, I hadn't given thought to that. I just knew that uh, most people. You know, the, the general practice is you start at Stringer Mountain, Georgia, and you hike up to Mount Katahdin. And uh, so I kind of planned on that, but uh, after I finished work, I, I went, did a few things in the spring and uh, just kind of ended up taking longer and longer to get, you know, my affairs in order, things taken care of. So I'm not losing, you know, you don't want to leave loose ends or anything like that when you're going to hike the trail. And you want to make sure that financially you're, you know, not putting yourself in a vulnerable, vulnerable position. So uh, it took me a little longer than expected to, you know, get the necessary gear and, you know, resources and just really have it properly planned. So initially I wanted to leave in March in, 
in Georgia, but uh, it turned out I wasn't going to be able to leave till late May, early June, um, and so I decided to that it would be best to go south at that point. Do you find that most people that you're hiking with in, in the southbound class this year do that hike southbound for the same reason as yours? They just kind of wanted more more money, more time, or do you find that a lot of people looked into it and said, you know, I, I think I might enjoy a southbound hike. What, what do you see in in your class this year? You know, I I think it really runs the gamut almost on the individual level. Um, <laughs> I have I have my friend Pace standing here with me. Pace, why did you decide to go southbound? Walk it over, baby. Uh, well, Pace is from Georgia, so obviously for him, walking back to Georgia um, is more is better. Absolutely, um, great inspiration. So I think. I think that is and another buddy I was hiking with, my friend Monster Mash. He uh, he had a similar, you know, idea. He's he's from Georgia and wanted to hike down in the south. I think that I think that's really a big thing for a lot of people um, is hiking back closer, you know, to their home so they don't have to get picked up, you know, a thousand miles or two thousand miles away, and uh, you know, and, and go through all that. Um, I think a lot of it is, you know, as in my case, like just the whole. Uh, planning thing, you know, I, I worked at a law firm until uh, the end of the last week of January, I believe. Um, so, getting all my stuff ready um, and feeling prepared and, and comfortable and confident in my uh, in my gear and and everything like that, uh, it took me longer than expected. Um, and you know, so March just was not reasonable. Uh, you know, you want to get in shape first too. You don't want to just go out there and you know wear your legs into the ground and blister your feet. Um, and I think for some people that they really ha- have known from the get go, like before they even really plan their hike, I think there are some people out there that really were like, yeah, I really want to go North or I really want to go South. Um, but I was not one of those people. Now I do have a, a few more questions regarding the trail, but I, I can't wait to ask you this because of the recent events with hurricane Sandy how did you fare? Uh, who were who you with? How, when did you find out about it? Did you take the proper precautions? Just tell us how you uh, survived the storm. Yeah, that, that is a great question. Uh, well, you know, I was with my, my buddy Pace. I'm hiking with currently, and uh, and our friend Dunn, and we all left Bear Mount. Uh, sorry, Four Pines Hostel, um, out of Catawba, Virginia, I believe last. Saturday, and we had no idea <laughs> really about the, the weather coming in. Uh, we had a few, um, you know, nice mellow days. We hiked a 17 out of there um, over an area called Dragon's Tooth, which is absolutely beautiful. Um, it's in the Dragon's Tooth McAfee's Knob section of Virginia, which any any through hiker or section hiker that's been to Virginia will know of these areas. They're absolutely gorgeous areas. Um, we went through there and then did another 18, and then the next day. Uh, or the end of the 18, and the next day we woke up, and there was snow coming down, and we were we were completely surprised. Uh, we hadn't had phone reception since we'd left uh, left the hostel. We were just in a, in a dead zone, and so we had no idea there was inclement weather approaching. And uh, you know, we woke up to flurries. And uh, you know, I, I woke up and I heard Pace say, "Look, it's snowing outside." And at first it was kind of like a a, a, co- a comedic thing. We we're like, "Oh my gosh, it's snowing!" Isn't that isn't that funny? <laughs> Isn't that funny? And then it kept snowing. And uh, so, you know, we got up and uh, we kept moving. And uh, our, our buddy Dunn, he actually, he, he stayed behind. And uh, Dunn, if you ever hear this, I hope you're doing well. I uh, tried to send him a text earlier because, you know, you're a little worried about people out here when inclement weather comes in. Yeah, um, especially actually, when you don't know about it, too. Yeah, I uh, I spent, you know, about half an hour today uh calling up buddies of mine up and down the trail. Uh, I talked to Smokey, um, who, you know, he's he's in the, uh, he's in Hot Springs, Virginia right now. I'm sorry, Hot Springs, North Carolina right now, uh, near the city of Asheville, um, about to enter into the, the Smoky Mountains. And there are, we've heard, uh, four, places where the snow is four, five feet, and even above. Um, so it's completely unhikeable at places now in the Smokies. Uh, so I was worried, you know, oh my gosh, or some of my friends stuck in shelters with, you know, four more feet of snow around them. 
Um, so that, that was a concern.